Howdy, 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 folks. Today we're going to look at something a little different. We're going to go over each variant of the Tumblr Cyclone ground vehicles. Uh, before we dig in, hey, if you like what I'm doing, do me a quick favor. Click the like button, tap subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications. Uh, the channel's growing every day, and I'm so grateful for each of you taking the time to watch my content. I love interacting with the viewers in the comments, and you folks have given me a lot of useful information and quite a few laughs as well. All right, well, let's dig in. So I'm not going to dive into the stats on these because, there's, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not like the ships where there's a huge selection of options for each different role. Uh, these guys kind of fit a little bit of everything. And there's not a whole lot of ground vehicles. I mean, the ground vehicle roster is expanding, but there's still just not that many options, and each one is, is fairly unique. Um, but I am going to go over each individual variant, and we'll discuss the differences there. As far as the similarities are concerned for the Cyclones, you know, each of them has at least two seats for you and... It's not really a co-pilot, but a, I guess a co-driver, a navigator. Uh, most either have a turret or they have a truck bed for a passenger, with a couple of exceptions. As far as function, all the Cyclones are really good for ground-based travel. Uh, in my opinion, they're the easiest ground transport to travel in. And what I mean by that is, is if you drive like a... RSI Ursa. Um, yeah, you can fit more stuff in it. You can do all that. That's obvious. However, it gets caught on things a lot easier that make travel much slower. Whereas the Cyclone with that ground clearance with the four points of contact instead of six, it just seems to have a much better time traversing obstacles going through really broken terrain. Uh, they all have a shared wheel width and length, uh, but the height is slightly different as you can actually see when you get to the ones that are armed. Um, so keep that in mind, depending on the ship you're wanting to use to transport them in, it might not fit super well. Uh, the primary use that I've seen out of pretty much all of them is traveling to hostile bunkers. Uh, which is a place where that that high speed, the low cost, and the ease of their maneuverability really shines. Uh, but let's let's get in here and look at the actual variants. Right, so the standard cyclone is a great option for newer pilots to get used to ground travel in Star Citizen. Like all the cyclones, it is available in game for around twenty eight thousand at Alpha UEC at New Deal in Lorville. It doesn't have any weapons mounted, but it does have a medium-sized weapon rack right there beside each cab each seat. It seats two in the cabin, and other party members can ride in the bed if you can keep them from falling out, of course. Uh, the flat cargo bed doesn't seem to have an actual cargo grid, or at least not one that I've been able to snap to, uh, but you can stack bodies from bunkers in here and reasonably transport them to a ship for proper uh, disposal is what we'll call it. Uh, the bed is also where you will find the external storage and you can store extra ammo or other supplies, things like that if you're running bunkers in there. and It's just nice to have. Alright, the Cyclone RC is the racing variant of the Cyclone. Uh, you can probably tell right away it's a different color but other than that it's not it's not a huge difference between it and the standard uh, the major difference is that there is no storage bed which I mean for some people it doesn't matter uh, the R the RC is a little bit faster although with the current state of driving ground vehicles uh, really anything faster than a standard cyclone isn't particularly useful on most surfaces because of how broken terrain is near virtually all bunkers right now. And I gotta mention again, it does have a sweet paint job. I, I really love black on red. 
God, it's so nice. Right, the Cyclone RN is the light reconnaissance variant of the Cyclone. A lot of ways, like when I look at this, to me, it's a little bit slower variant than the RC. It still seems a bit faster than the standard Cyclone. Uh, I mean, that's not entirely true, but in practice this time, that's what it really is. The, the beacon and scanner function that it's supposed to have aren't in game yet. Uh, once they are implemented, that'll be pretty awesome, especially for explorers who are you know, wanting to map out an area or once they bring base building in, I could see this is a great way to mark terrain. Uh, but that's all speculation. You know, as of now, they're, they're just ideas. Once again, that, that bed area from the standard gets taken up with the scanner equipment. All right, uh, the Cyclone TR. So this is the Toyota Hilux of the verse. Uh, it mounts a size one yellow jacket ballistic gatling. Uh, this variant has crew positions for three members. Uh, the bed area is replaced with that turret for the gatling. This is one of the cheapest vehicles you can get, ground vehicles you can get, that has an actual weapon. Granted, that stock weapon is virtually useless against anything but infantry because it does not have enough rounds to shoot down pretty much any ship. So if you're getting this thinking you can use it for ground support against aerial targets, that's just not the case. All right, the Cyclone MT. The MT fits in to me like a fully upgraded 90s kid's dream of a Humvee. Uh, it mounts a size one long sword ballistic cannon. Additionally, it has a missile counter measure battery. So it does have some flare and decoys. It has four size two dominator missiles. Now, the difference between the MT and the TR is not just the missiles and the countermeasures. The cannon has, I'm pretty sure, either the exact same or slightly more or less, it's around the same amount of ammunition, but does significantly more damage. Um, and that's, that's kind of important when you think about it, because if you have to use that against other vehicles or aerial targets, that's a much more viable option. Yet still, it's important to remember that it's a size one cannon. It's not probably going to take down, even if you dump a full mag into a lot of light fighters, it's not going to kill them. Uh, to me, if you want a little more staying power in a fight, switch that cannon out with a laser repeater or even a laser cannon to counter the low ammo count on the ballistics. Now this is my go-to cyclone for most things, especially as a support vehicle for ground operations like Jump Town or Ghost Hollow. The last variant is the most specialized variant of the bunch. It is the AA. It's all in the name. It's anti-air. It mounts four size two Dominator missile missiles <laughs> and it has an EMP which makes this a really great support vehicle for ground operations kind of like the MT with a bit more specialization using that EMP you know if you switch those dominators for Rattler 2s or even you can switch it up to eight size one missiles uh, you're looking at a great option to increase staying power in a long fight so with the changes that have come recently with persistent entity streaming and the ability to reload missile racks with loose missiles, the viability of the Cyclone as support vehicles for ground operations really can't be dismissed anymore. Uh, before those changes, these were glorified battle taxis to bunkers, and that was their only real use in game. Now they have a true battle implementation and the ability to move to support other vehicles to dominate ground operations. 
I will say, and this is one of the very few times I'm actually going to use this for anything, but I, I spent seven years in the U.S. Army Infantry. I absolutely love these trucks. They drive great. They're dirt, and I mean dirt cheap, and they're functional, especially when you start looking at how you would use the armed variants for support for ground operations. I do mention support because they're not going to lead a charge. Okay, this isn't the... Uh, 1970s, 1980s, where uh, Chad's going against Libya, you know, these aren't going to do that. But if you're running ground operations, you know, if you're setting up a, a big PvP event, which I've done a few of those, you can use these to support Novas and Centurions and actually do things and put yourself in places where the enemy is not going to expect you. And that really can't be overstated uh, the Cyclone TR was the first vehicle that I bought in the game and I absolutely love it I've used them all and have grown very fond of using the RC and RN for bunker runs to get done just a bit faster uh, one of the best things about these vehicles I've mentioned it a few times I'm going to mention it again is they're, they're low cost in game I mean I'll be honest this is one of the few also that I, I, I wouldn't bother pledging them because they're so cheap I mean, you can buy any of them after running two Tier 0 bunkers right after a wipe. And they absolutely will repay their purchase cost very, very quickly. All right, this has been Eyes of Heimdall's Buyer's Guide for the Tumbrel Cyclone series of trucks. If you like what I'm doing, please click like, hit subscribe, and tap the bell icon for notifications. As always, it was a blast setting up and recording this video. If you have any requests for upcoming videos, let me know in the comments below. Alright folks, get out there and conquer the stars. I look forward to seeing you all out there in the verse.